Sean, tell us a little bit about where, how you started. Well, I went to school in Mount Sign and um, was to be a school teacher. But for some reason or another, I didn't end up there. I ended up with Harvey and Son up the road here, uh, where there were four or five businesses. Uh, there was a house and insurance agency, a stockbroking business, a penny worth of a penny bank, and there was a little bit of travel, but there was very, very little travel at that stage. So eventually, then, when the, the owner, Mr. Jacob, Mr. Charles Jacob, decided to um, get out of business, he decided to sell the different businesses to different people. And I was the one, I suppose, for the, for the travel business because I suppose that when I was going to school, I was organizing, bu organizing buses to matches. And I suppose that uh, the brother who taught me, Brother Keane, sort of felt that that might be my 40 in life. So this is where I ended up uh, over 52, I'm over here over 52 years now. And, and I suppose, um, just to go back to the Penny Bank for a second, because that was a, a, an institution. That was be before the TSB, wasn't it? Right? Correct. Yeah. The Penny Bank like, was eventually bought by uh, Dublin City Bank, which eventually became Anglo-Irish, would you believe? <laughs> so there's a story there. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Penny Bank people used to come there every Friday with their uh, five, uh, five shilling notes and their uh, pennies and so on and so forth. And there was a small little book, you had a small little book and everything was entered in and you'd uh, save until Christmas and you would draw out your money at Christmas. But it was a unique place because, you know, it had re repetitive customers every week. And uh, I would sort of say that there were people who saved in that bank, that there were dormant accounts uh, when they went to um, Dublin City Bank, that they were taken over by them. But uh, look where they ended. And come here, was, were, those, were those Jacobs, were they being... Yes, they were. Uh, Mr. Ch Mr. Jacob, uh, Mr. Charles Shuttleworth Jacob, uh, was a Quaker and a very honest and very upright man. I must say that I got a fantastic training from that man. Uh, I mean, Waterford would have been a lot of business people at that time. Who I suppose earlier were Quakers, weren't they? Yes, they were. There were a huge amount of them. I know Mr. Jacob's uh, accountant was C. Norman Baker. He was a Quaker as well. But Mr. Jacob had a, a huge affinity towards the Quaker movement. Uh, up there, there used to be a, uh, called a Society of Friends, and uh, I know he used to go there every Sunday morning to practice and so on and so forth. But he gave me a great training. Okay. And then with that, with the travel business, I mean, I presume not many people in Waterford went on holidays, exotic holidays. Back it, was, it was unheard of. It was unheard of. <laughs> I remember I used to go to matches. Uh, we'd say out in Kilcorn or out to Johnville or out to South End with leaflets. Uh, sort of bringing leaflets out to sort of say, would you, like, would you like to go on a continental holiday? And it was unheard of then. I remember the first um, the travel things that I did would have been across the Atlantic, people going immigrating to New York uh, from Cove. Uh, but uh, I just kept at it anyhow, and uh, a lot of the lads from Waterford Crystal, whom I would have gone to school with, uh, were probably earning five times as much as what I was earning. So I began to target them. And, um, you know, the first lot of lads would have gone off to, San, to not to Santa Ponza, down to the Costa Brava. And I remember very, very well that uh, sometimes, you know, if you were going to either the Costa Brava or going to Mallorca, you'd have to refuel someplace en route, so like in a vehicle on the aeroplane. So like, you know, they, they were great times because like the excitement of going away on a continent and holiday then, at that stage was just stunning, the same as if you were going to Australia nowadays. And the lads and the girls and the people that I went to school with and my friends and so on and so forth, I suppose I coerced them. I remember having a black and white film show down in the Tower Hotel one night and we did a cheese and mine party uh, in, the, in the Tower Hotel for a lot of the lads. We invited them to see this thing, it was unheard of then. But uh, like I remember we got a, a huge number of bookings out of it. And out of that then, the gospel spread. Well, I sort of said, well, if you go down to Sean Power, he'll probably send you to Santa Fonza, he'll send you to, Mar to uh, Costa Brava. Loretta Mar was a big take at that stage. But uh, they were great times, you know, because uh, I, like, I built up a lot of friendships as well. I would have had customers there, that lads that would have been with me coming year after year after year. It became a habit then. But at the start, it was very, you know, it was unheard of. I think some fellas, when they saw me going with the uh, with the leaflets, they were, they were wondering to know are these things for free, or uh, and like a lot of lads would have paid in on, on a weekly basis, uh, but uh, great times. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, was it mostly Spain people? Went to? Oh yes, it was on like other places were unheard of then. I mean, they say 
the, 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 the main focus was always on the Costa Brava or the Costa del Sol or Benidorm. Benidorm was a huge hit with some of the lads because that, that was uh, very well known in the British market and then became known in the Irish market. And I mean, you said earlier on that at the start there was a lot of, I mean, your, some of your business was emigration. Yes. I mean, Waterford would always have had a, a route to the UK and for work and all that kind of Oh yeah, well I remember like, I used to book people on the boat from uh, down here below in the, in the quay, Adelphi Quay, uh, uh, going from uh, here to Fishguard. And then it became from Ross Lair, you know, got the train to Ross Lair and then down. But, like, uh, at that stage of the game, there was very few people, uh, you know, travelling any place. Uh, it was a sort of a, an un unheard of. And, um, you know, when people talked about steerage class and first class and so on and so forth, uh, that was, that were, these were the terms that were used uh, during that stage of travel. And, and what about cruises? Because when did that come in? Because, I mean, I know you've been... You know, very much involved in bringing yeah. business to water. When did well, 1988, I went to the States and, um, well, first of all, Bert Falter told me that cruise ships would not come to Waterford, they'd come to Dublin and Cork. And my answer to that, I said to him, well, why did they go to different ports in Europe? Why did they have to find a different port rather than Barcelona and Palma? I said, I believe we have the honey pot in Waterford, which is Waterford Crystal. And I went to the States in 1988 and, um, they told me the first year no, they told me the second year no, but I kept going the third year. And they said, you're very persistent. I said, I am, because I have something to sell you. I have the finest um, venue in Europe. And you know, Water for Crystal then was a glowing example of what, our industry, what the industry in Water was about. And we got the first cruise ship then about 1989. And since then, you know, Water has become a popular port of call for cruise ships. I also know that you've been very much about the soccer business over the years. Yes, I... Both as a... Southern? Correct, yeah. yeah. So. Well, I, 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 you know, Father Nicholas Power, the Lord of Mercy, and brought me in the, into that. And um, I served there as, I suppose, everything from uh, groundsman to treasurer to chairman. And uh, enjoyed my time there. I mean, to say we played in John Mooney's when there was cow dirt on the, on the field. And you would have to go out of a Sunday morning and gather that into, un, into, in, uh, onto a, into something before the game could start. But like, that's the way life was then. There was no showers. Uh, the lads washed themselves in a, in, a, in a water, you know, the rainwater. So like, but it was, it was enjoyable because there was a sense of um, camaraderie ship. Then I moved on to be uh, a secretary of Waterford Football Club during the time that we played Manchester United, Glasgow Celtic, Galatasaray, uh, Bo Vovertz. I was involved in a lot of that. I was involved in the first time that Warford played Manchester United in Lansdowne Road uh, with a, a very nice man called Mr. Don Kennedy, uh, whose son is still Dr. Kennedy out in, in Arkeen there. But I met um, some really great people. I mean, they say Praddy Kern, Bobby Stiles, Bobby Stiles, uh, and uh, Jock Steen from Glasgow Celtic. I met him as well. So. I'd have a long old history in sport and do that a lot. Was, that was the best, I mean, that was some Waterford football team. Wasn't oh, a wonderful team, a wonderful team. I mean to say, I go back to the days of Jimmy McGough and Al Casey, the Lord of Mercy on him, John O'Neill, Alfie Hale, um, Peter Thomas, Peter Bryan. You know, every match on a the Sunday then was a cup final. There was no such thing as, you know, you were playing a cup final every Sunday because you had to keep winning, you know, seven league titles in a row. and. Uh, like I did, I did the travel arrangements. Then I was involved with the buses and the the um, the food for the players and so on and so forth. But I I I brought them to um, I brought them to play Galatasaray in Istanbul, and I brought them to play um, Manchester United. But there's one very funny story which I tell about Manchester United. We were playing Manchester United in in um, in Old Trafford, and Al Casey uh, fell down on the ground and uh, Arthur Mersenham and. Johnny Barnes, Lord of Mercy, came in onto the pitch and, and sort of was with the magic sponge. But over came Paddy, Paddy Kern and he said, Come on, Al, get up out of there. There's nothing up with you at all. And he looked up at him like that and he said, By the way, Paddy, I'm on 4 to 12 in, in the paper mills tomorrow. You can stay in bed. So I just thought, and so did the Manchester United players. They enjoyed the fact of the amateurism as against the professionalism. But these were a great era, you know, wonderful times. And like the. Uh 
with, with, I mean, Water also had a famous soccer history before that, even like if you go back to, you know, uh, Jimmy Gall, correct. And, uh, there was a lot of different fellas went off from Waterford to play England. Oh, it was hereditary here, you know. I mean, to say, like, we had Jimmy Gall that came over from England. We had Alfie Hill that went across Channel. Uh, we had John O'Neill that went over for a short stint across Channel. But, like, Waterford has been always steeped in, 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 in soccer, you know. Yeah, even Yeah, Jim Beglin, you know. I knew him. I organised his testimonial in Waterford here for him. When the FUI would not give him a testimonial, uh, we did his testimonial in the Tor Hotel. Uh, and he brought over Rye Batty with him, uh, who was a Leeds player at that stage. So, like, you know, Jim Beglin was an icon, uh, you know, and you take John O'Shea. I heard somebody saying recently that uh, Alex Ferguson said he was one of the nicest guys that ever stepped inside the door in Manchester United. So, like, we've had a lot of great people out of, out of Waterford here. And would you, would you remember the Fitzgeralds or was that the Oh, I would. Oh, no. My mother used to bring me out to, uh, out. she often said, I often spent the rent, Sean, to bring you to a match. Uh, she used to bring me out to Kilcone. Um, was she interested in soccer? Oh, loved it. Yeah. She loved it. She loved the soccer. And uh, I remember winning it, uh, I think, a penny on the ball one Sunday. You'd, you'd, you'd buy a ticket, for a raffle ticket for the, the match ball. And I remember winning uh, the match ball and some fell offered me money for it and I wouldn't sell it. So like, it, it just goes back to, I suppose again, that our love, my mother was a, was a great woman for the soccer. She loved the, she loved the game and every Sunday to be out at Kilcone when I was this high. Uh, but I suppose that she... And what about the band? You know, the whole thing with the GA and the soccer and all that. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was I, I got in, I, I was suspended over that at one stage. As a matter of fact, I, I organised a, a team in Mount Sign uh, to play in the Easter Cup, which was a soccer match. Oh, were you in school at that time? I was, uh, and um, didn't they come out on the on the uh, the papers the following day? Mount Sign Hammer Mongrels, <laughs> and uh, I was the culprit. And you know, I was the fellow who organised the bus, so I was the fellow that had to take the suspension. But like, we were then put out of the competition because we'd have to use our proper name, and we weren't allowed to use Mount Sign Butcher. Like, I remember another time going out to Kilcone and... Wasn't there a famous sit-down at all? I was time? involved in that. <laughs> <laughs> I was involved in it, yeah. <laughs> I was a ringleader, I suppose, you know, but I, I, all the school came out with me, so yeah. they didn't see and, any... I think Dennis came up and joined That's you. That's right. Well, you know, they didn't see anything wrong in what we were doing. We thought we were doing wonders, you know, competing against teams from Sligo and Limerick and so on and so forth, but I remember another day we went, took a half day off of school for some reason and um, we were outside in, in Kilcone in over the ten next minute there were two lads went inside the vigilante committee so it was just you know oh yeah it was it was difficult times. But was that to get your name? Yeah or? get your name and you'd be cited it's for you know the ethics of the which are, we didn't know anything better we just thought it was all good fun and uh, we, we just sort of decided that... It's mad we look back on it. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful times. I mean, it's a great memories of the whole thing because I thought it was, you know, we were to sport. I only say, I'm in sport all my life. I now deal with the Warford Hullers. I do all their logistics and help them out with travel and fundraising and that. But I just see life as being, you know, you have a business to run, but you also need pastimes. And my pastime has always been sport whether it's soccer or hurling or racing or no matter what it is, I still enjoy it. As I do enjoy, somebody said to me the other day, why are you going in there six days a week? I said, I enjoy it, I enjoy people. I love a challenge. That's great. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, well basically, uh, I was to be suspended. Um, because I was the ringleader, uh, so that's what I was called at the time. But um, the, the rest of the lads in the school sort of felt that I was being hard done by. So they decided to um, come out in sympathy with me. And they, they sat down uh, there outside the barracks and up came Simon Farrell, the Lord of Mercy. And Simon Farrell was in the Munster Express at that stage. And he took this famous picture of, uh, I think it made national headlines, but sure we didn't know anything better at the time. We were, we were, we thought, but then we were, I, I was, I was uh, reprieved and I was taken back and everybody came back in again and all was forgiven. But <laughs> was the team allowed to play in the competition? No, we, we, we did. What happened, the outcome of it was this. Um, we went unofficially, we were put out of the competition 
We went unofficially in, um, after the school holidays to play Summerhill College in Sligo, who had beaten Mungrets, and we went up to play them because the brother up there sort of felt they were hard done by that he wanted us, and we were beaten by them. But like, sure, we still enjoyed it. It was a day out, another day out, and like days out to Sligo then were like going to America. So we enjoyed every minute of it, and I suppose when you look back on it, sure, I suppose we were daring at the time, but we didn't really know what we were doing. That's great. But uh, that's it. Okay, Is that OK, Ali? Brilliant. So it just gives you a little bit of background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to I'm sorry you got wet there. No, I don't mind about wet. I'm used to soccer. <laughs> I'm outside in the wet. Standing on the side of the I am. I'm at that morning. Thanks for that. Thanks, Thanks very for much. choosing me. I will yeah. talk to you soon. Yeah, we'd be glad to help Thank you any way we can with you. Thanks, Brilliant. Okay. Cheers. Take it, Ali.